Welcome back. It's day 124. I'm doing one more insecticidal soap and hydrogen peroxide wash-off treatment to get rid of spider mites. In the last episode, I showcased some up-close footage of adult spider mites running around spinning webs. By the time you see that, you're in big trouble. So I cut away that old flora cane that was the original cane that I planted and then I still saw spider mites, hence this treatment. The insecticidal soap should kill upon contact. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds. Once they've been sprayed with it or soaked in it, they'll die immediately. It gets into their spiracles, uh, breathing tubes, and their exoskeletons. Well, I'm assuming they operate the same way all the insects do, and arachnids. So now I'm doing a wash off. And I'm slowing this down here just so you can see that rainbow from the mist. So it's a beautiful plant, but up close I can notice a little bit of yellow-green modeling, um, small defects in the leaves, and I think those are all caused by this infestation and other bugs. So it's day 128. You can see a little hole on the top there. Uh, this foliage normally hangs over the balcony rail. I'm quite disappointed in how such a thick offshoot that burst out of the soil at an angle couldn't maintain its structural integrity and to compensate for that it has this sort of S-shaped curve. So these are the biggest compound leaves I've ever seen. Some of the uh, compound leaflets at the end are fused together. Some aren't as in this case. So these are huge. They're beyond what I've seen and expected from internet pictures and this low offshoot that came off the main trunk from one of the bottom nodes is underdeveloped but this is where the plant has chosen to reproduce and fruit so this is what raspberry flowers look like in the last episode I showed you what the buds look like there are two here and these flowers don't seem to last very long and they sort of start turning brown around the edges probably within two or three days it's not very long at all I'm always disappointed when flowers don't last long but not everything can be an orchid nor does it need to it might not serve the plant's interest just to flower for weeks or months like orchids so I decided I'm going to remove all the banana and mango peel um, crust from the smoothies the two different ones that I made before the mango seed smoothie I felt was a good idea, but the mango peel and whatever, the fruit pulp inside sort of made it foam. So right now, you can see all these fungus gnat larvae squiggling away, and who knows what else is in there, what kind of grubs or larvae. Maybe it's not just one species of fungus gnat. So anyway, I figured it was the banana peels and the fruit pulp from the mango, the mango peel that gave this a bad consistency and if I were to make a mango seed smoothly pure mango seed maybe it'll have a different consistency and rot away faster I would really like to see this decompose faster or maybe I could use less material but my tendency is always to use more so I'm going to remove all of this and see what happens you can see there's a new primal cane coming out from the soil that's been there for a few days I've decided I'm going to remove all of the low-lying compound leaves. They're not really big. They don't get a lot of sun, and they're just in the way when I'm doing operations like that. Not only that, but because of the recent spider mite infestation, they could harbor a lot of adult reproducing spider mites on the undersides. If you just miss one spot with all that insecticidal soap, then everything will come back. So it looks pretty gnarly down there. It's wet. It's a great environment for fungus gnats. I've tried to keep this series 100% organic because that's what people like. They're opposed to, quote, chemicals, unquote. But hydrogen peroxide as a wash off and a minor bug killer that's probably quite ineffective. That's a compound that's formed a free radical within our cells. So that's natural too. Well, technically, what is natural? So. I'm making a mango seed only smoothie, no peels. So I'm going to see what the consistency is like. So far it looks sort of like a, a bad powdered milk. And I'm putting in four seeds that look healthy. And by healthy, I mean if you've peeled and uh, examined many mango seeds before, the ones that I'm putting in right now 
are the ones that look healthier. There are white, beige, light in color. Unhealthy ones, I, sh I would say, are the ones that have these gray and black zones just right out of the seed coat already. I think those areas have begun decomposition in that black or gray. Um, those bruises run more than skin deep. So this smoothie is pasty white because I only use four good seeds and I'll distribute this between this pot and the Joshua tree pot. The Joshua tree pot I've removed the old smoothie crusts as well. So as you can see it doesn't foam and it's more full of particulates so they drain pretty easily and I imagine this will have the desired effect. It won't form an impermeable crust so I didn't have enough to cover that entire layer of surface so I blended up eight other seeds that were more rotten looking meaning they had those gray and black patches or, or zones and apparently it doesn't run just skin deep because as you can see the coloration here is totally different but I figured I'm short on material and this should be okay because it's all gonna rot here anyway it only concerns the aesthetics uh, maybe the first two or three days after application. So this is what it looks like after it dries out and pretty much settles very quickly. You can see the uh, popped bubbles leave behind these little craters and it looks like a evenly coated layer of organic sand. And some of it got on the stem that I pruned and that's pretty much it. I expect for each successive watering, water will drain through this very, very quickly. Now going back to what I was saying earlier, I haven't used any non-organic pesticides to deal with these spider mites, and I think this insecticidal soap is still lacking in performance. It's day 131, and that offshoot is the workhorse of this plant. It leans over the balcony rail and does all the photosynthesis with its huge leaves. You can see this new offshoot is starting to gain steam. It doesn't look to be covered with any spider mites or bugs yet. So that's good. We get a reboot. And I noticed an adult spider mite on this giant offshoot hanging over the balcony. So it's got a thick stem, but it still sort of lacks structural integrity. The flowers are coming along nicely on this lower, much underdeveloped offshoot. And I hope I can see some raspberries pretty soon. Uh, local bees are interested in visiting this every day. And on the big offshoot again, I was wondering if that was a, just a big aphid. Because I've seen some online that look like that. So I'm watering and um, basically there are cracks in places where this big uh, mango seed smoothie dried out and the water can go in there. It can go around the perimeter because there are cracks there as well. But it also just um, soaks through this entire layer of dried out smoothie. It doesn't take long at all. So it's basically impossible to flood the top as I've found. And it has very small watering trays so you don't want to test its limits otherwise you see a waterfall coming out of the watering tray which is really annoying and messy to clean up and there are definitely many bees that are interested in visiting my flowers flowers aren't in a great position but they can see it just fine and I've seen baby earwigs, pincer bugs crawling around I don't know what that is so it's day 134 so by day 140 you can see this offshoot and its big thick spiky stem is resting entirely on the balcony rail. Luckily I've been able to position it so that uh, none of these really big compound leaves get jammed up and broken off. But it's still growing. So it's not my favorite kind of um, shrubby growth. I like things with structural integrity. I like things that can stand up like trees and not fall over. But as you can see, there are so many new primocanes that it's almost hard to count. Let's see, there's this big one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, possibly eight, maybe more on the way. It's hard to tell um, how many there are exactly because there are so many little 
cracks in or places where the mango seed smoothie is bumped up. Oh, I just noticed another one close to us. So yeah, that's going to result in a very crowded situation. And I'm wondering if this is bark developing on this uh, offshoot. It's been a very slow process, but it looks like bark is developing. So that's a first for me. So anyway, if these things are all going to grow in parallel, their leaves are going to bump into each other. And this first mover is really going to dominate, I bet. It's going to get really thick and generate huge leaves. Hopefully everything doesn't just fall over in the most awkward positions. But if it does, if they all fall over, I imagine they'll go the same way this original giant offshoot, this workhorse, did. And basically everything wants to get more sun because once it hangs over the rail, it's not limited to four hours or four and a half hours of sun a day. So you can see there are some burned edges. I don't know if that's from insecticidal soap or hydrogen peroxide. So yeah, um, these have been around for a few days, a week or two already. And this is how raspberries form. This is all new to me. So I expect to have a harvest by the time I have my next episode ready to publish. Thanks for watching.